In today's video, I want to take you guys through a major update on a upcoming free-to-play PlayStation 4 game, and it will be dropping very soon. It's a Battle Royale title, however, it is very, very different than your regular Battle Royale title, and I think there will be some inherent interest at least initially for the game and we'll talk all about the updates to darwin project also elden rings and tales of arise are said to be part of sony's taipei game show lineup those are two games i know a lot of you guys are excited for both of them technically japanese rpgs but a very very distinct and different styles elden ring probably going to be more of a action rpg but whatever the case may be very excited to see both of those we'll talk that at the end of this video First up, Darwin Project will be officially launching on PlayStation 4 January 14th. Brave the Canadian Rockies and nine other inmates in a free-to-play Battle Royale title. A PlayStation blog post was put out by Theodore Solari, community manager over at Scavenger Studio, and it notes, Hello, inmates, and welcome to Darwin Project. We here at Scavenger Studios are really excited to come to PlayStation 4 and add you to our growing list of totally willing arena combatants come January 14th. Darwin Project is a Battle Royale game that features 10 inmates, Inmates, so it's not your chaotic 100 player game or anything like that but it has 10 inmates fighting for fame and fortune in a gladiator style arena somewhere deep in the post-apocalyptic Canadian Rockies where not only you'll have to fight the other inmates in the arena but the harshness of Canadian winters as well. Each inmate will enter the arena equipped with both a battle ready axe and bow that best suits your style and corporation sponsored high tech gear of your choice that will augment your combat abilities and hopefully give you the edge needed to claim victory over the other players and nature itself. And one of the most compelling elements of the game, and let's not forget the ever watchful eye of the show director and overseer of the arena who acts as the host of the show, causing chaos wherever they may go with an assortment of abilities such as dropping nukes, creating oceans of lava, or even helping inmates by granting them health and resources. Have you got what it takes to survive? Gear up, the show's about to start. They note some elements of the game, including jet wings, equip these aerodynamic fuel-injected jet wings, and take to the skies, master their maneuverability and acrobatic abilities to daze and amaze your opponents while raining death on them from above with a flurry of arrows. Grapple gauntlet, like things up and close and personal, then close the gap in the blink of an eye and bring the fight directly to your opponents and give them the chance to meet the business end of your personalized axe or grab the environment for quick getaways and navigation. You've got the headhunter drone, are you the type of person who likes to have a companion with you venturing out in the wilderness? Then be sure not to enter the arena with with this helpful little friend who can gather resources for you as well as tracking your opponents to ensure you're never taken by surprise. So Darwin Project is a game that's been in early access on PC for quite a while and while it's been received really well by the people that have played it, if you actually go on the Steam page you'll see that it has a very positive reception all time. 13,204 user reviews, 81% of those are positive, and then if you look at the recent reviews posted in the last 30 days, which is probably more indicative of a game like this, given that it's a game that's updated pretty regularly, it's 88% positive. Unfortunately, with a game like this, it is going to be entirely reliant on how active that online community is, and unfortunately, it's not going to have cross-platform play, which is a real big bummer. I think cross-platform play would have added a lot of longevity to a game like this. Now, I don't know the exact hurdles it takes and what you have to go through to get cross-platform play in place. A game like this coming from a smaller studio, I guess it just wasn't in the cards. Whatever the case may be, I do think that's going to be a hindrance to the game, especially if one of the downsides to it is just a lacking community. Whatever the case may be, Darwin Project, I imagine, will have an initial amount of hype surrounding it when it does drop on January 14th. Now, whether that sustains or not is going to be an entirely different subject, but hopefully it does, and again, it drops January 14th. Absolutely free to play so check it out then all right moving on from that elden ring tales of arise are part of sony's taipei game show lineup sony recently announced its taipei game show lineup and it includes some third-party titles like elden ring and tales of arise the two games which have been both announced at e3 2019 will be present at the event in video format only while it has been a while since we've seen either of the two games new trailers being shown during the taipei game show is not a given considering it's not considered a major major event so we should moderate our expectations a little bit they could very well just show 
the trailers they already showed at E3, which would be a little bit of a bummer, but hey, any new trailer with just a little bit of new nuances, that would be much appreciated. Whatever the case may be, it is about time we learn a little bit more about Elden Ring. Last week, From Software revealed through a New Year's card on its website that the game may be released in June, and that's not all too far out. That's, what, five months away? And this is a game we have still yet to see any gameplay on. How crazy is that? A game that's being rumored to release in June, and we have still yet to see any gameplay. Is that out of the realm of how things are normally done? No, not necessarily, but still, we are inching closer and closer to that time period where I think we have to see gameplay rather soon. In the case of Tales of Arise, that's a game we don't even know when it's coming, probably around that same timetable, maybe a little bit later in the year. That's a game we've already seen a little bit of gameplay of. An official announcement about Elden Ring has yet to come, so there's no way to tell if we'll truly be able to play the team's next game in around five months. However, Elden Ring is one of the most mysterious games in development for PC and consoles. And according to Hidetaka Miyazaki, it will be From Software's biggest game yet, and rumors suggest that it will expand the scope seen in the Souls series considerably. I do imagine it's going to be a significant, significant, not necessarily improvement, but let's say growth from the Soul series. I don't want to say the word improvement because that suggests thing that Souls has something to really improve upon. The Souls was a tremendous franchise of games. However, if the entire scope of the game is just being heightened, then yeah, it's growing a lot from the Souls games. And I'll go back to this over and over again when talking about from software it is staggering to see the consistency of their game lineup this generation i mean they have dropped so many high quality games from dark souls 3 bloodborne sekiro shadows died twice and elden ring all coming this generation that is four huge marquee titles being released in a single console generation a lot of other major studios these days are really limiting themselves to doing one to two games this generation look at a studio like sucker punch sucker punch put out infamous second son back Back in 2014, they have yet to do another game. They'll hopefully have Ghost of Tsushima done uh, before the end of this generation, but it just goes to show that game development time is getting longer and longer, but in the case of From Software, they've put out these games at such a consistent and rapid pace, and here's the more important part, they have still been of utmost quality. Dark Souls 3 was incredibly well-received, Bloodborne was well-received, Sekiro was well-received, and maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I think Elden Ring is going to end up being a phenomenal game. And then, how about Tales of Arise? Tales of Arise is a game that I am incredibly stoked for because I think it's a game that could really take the Tales of franchise to the next level. Yes, Tales of has been around for a very, very long time. However, one of the reasons I think the franchise is kind of stuck around to its you know, decent level of fandom, it hasn't really exploded in terms of JRPG fandom, is because of its traditional style that it's been sticking to for a very long time, that traditional visual style, that traditional uh, presentation style, gameplay style, whatever the case may be, but then you look at Tales of Arise, and it is looking to completely turn the franchise on its head from Tales of Berseria, and look, I love Tales of Berseria, I love the Tales of Vesperia remaster, but I am all for Tales of doing something new, because now more than ever, I think a Western audience is okay with trying out Japanese RPGs. You look at the success of Persona 5. You look at the anticipation of Persona 5 Royal and the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. You know, do I expect Tales of Arise to do as well as the Final Fantasy 7 Remake? Absolutely not, but there's levels to this, and I do think Tales of definitely has a lot of levels to grow in terms of its fandom and in terms of its worldwide recognition, and especially over here in the West. I think the games have been rather good, but I do think with Tales of Arise, if the fundamental qualities of the game and all of the storytelling elements, which have always been rather strong with Tales of, and then the gameplay refinements, if those turn out to be rather good, I do see a lot of upward mobility for Tales of as a franchise to grow over here in the States, and also over in Japan, if a game just increases its quality level, hey, it can grow in Japan as well, and then obviously worldwide, it could just get bigger and bigger, so a lot of potential in Tales of going forward, especially with the revamp that Tales of Arise is bringing. And not to mention, after the success of Tales of Vesperia Remaster, they should be remastered mastering all the Tales of games, maybe not doing them one game at a time, but hey, put Tales of Zillio 1 and 2 in a remastered collection for PlayStation 4, put Tales of Graces, put Tales of the New World, Tales of Symphonia, there are so many Tales of games that honestly I lose a little bit track of them, but while you're also doing these new compelling games with this new style, why not remaster the older games as more people are becoming aware of Tales of, because I do see that quiet growth happening right now, and hopefully with the release of Tales of Arise that really just explodes. And that's gonna conclude 
with this video. Again, Darwin Project, a free-to-play PlayStation 4 game, will be dropping January 14th. It's really going to come down to whether or not there is a community of people playing the game, because so far, the people that have checked out Darwin Project seem to really enjoy it, but there hasn't been that sustainable player base, and that's really unfortunate. Maybe that'll change. With the full game release come January 14th, and Elden Ring and Tales of Arise are both being promoted for Sony's Taipei Game Show. Hopefully, we see some new content for both of those games. Would love to see some new trailers, even if we don't get live gameplay or anything like that, new trailers for both of those titles would be much appreciated. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.